In our last video, we looked at fractional distillation, where crude oil is separated into different length hydrocarbons. There's a link on the left. Today's topic of cracking follows on nicely from that video. It is the case that shorter hydrocarbons release energy faster than longer ones, and because of this, they're more useful. You can see from the graph that the demand for short-chain hydrocarbons like petrol with 7 to 9 carbons is higher than the supply. With longer molecules like fuel oil with 20 to 27 carbons, there's more than enough supply to meet demand. If things carry on this way, we'll have an overabundance of bitumen to lay roads, but no petrol to drive our cars on those roads. So what do we do? We do cracking. This is just splitting up long hydrocarbon chains into smaller ones. You can see here that a 7-carbon heptane molecule is split into a 5-carbon pentane and a 2-carbon ethene. So, the 7-carbon heptane has the formula C7H16. One of the products is pentane, with 5 carbons and 12 hydrogens. That leaves us left with 2 carbons, but only 4 hydrogens. And as a rule, carbon has to make 4 bonds. So it creates a double covalent bond to achieve this. That gives us a second cracking product, ethene. Because of this double bond, we say it's unsaturated. This means that not all of the carbon bonds are taken by hydrogen atoms. It's also an alkene rather than alkane. Just to remind you, here's a table showing the first four hydrocarbons in alkane and alkene form. Now we know what cracking is and why we do it. Let's finish with how it's done. Here's the setup for an experiment into cracking hydrocarbons. Mineral wool has been soaked in oil and pushed into the boiling tube. Next, you add your catalyst. Now, in industrial cracking, aluminium and silica-based catalysts are used, but for thermal decomposition, all we need is a large surface area, which we can get um, nice and hot. You can use small bits of pumice stone or broken plant pots or anything like that. The catalyst is heated, giving that hot surface area needed to break the hydrocarbons and then gently heat the oil-soaked wool. The hydrocarbons will evaporate, move over the catalyst, and at this point thermal decomposition will happen and the chains will break. Products will move down the delivery tube and be collected and tested. The presence of carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bonds allows alkenes to react in ways that alkenes cannot. This allows us to tell alkenes apart from alkenes using a simple chemical test. Bromine water is an orange solution of bromine. It becomes colourless when it's shaken with an alkene. Alkenes can decolourise bromine water, but alkanes cannot. The reason that alkenes can decolourise bromine water is that they have that spare bond and it attaches to the bromine molecule, taking it out of solution. Alkanes don't have a spare bond, so they can't take this bromine molecule out of the water. Now, in your exam, you might be asked to solve a cracking equation like this one. How do we work out the formula of the second product? Well, we know that there has to be a conservation of mass, so the left and right hand signs need to be balanced. 20 of the 25 carbons are accounted for, so there must be 5 carbons. 42 of the 52 hydrogens have been used, so that leaves 10 remaining. So the answer is C5H10. That's it. We've covered what cracking is, why we do it, how is it done, and how to test for alkene products. As ever, have a go at these questions. Answers will be coming in a few seconds. See you next time.